In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to swim fast over a long period of time without getting tired. Now, if you're losing steam and getting slower over the course of a workout or a race, make sure you watch this video until the end because I'm gonna share with you some pro swimming tips that are used by some of the greatest swimmers on the planet, including none other than Katie Ledecky. She is the distance queen, considered one of the greatest freestyle swimmers of all time. And I wanna start by analyzing her technique and a lot of the principles that she she uses in her technique can be applied to you as well. So let's go ahead and break down four fundamental pieces including rotation, kick, pull and body position. Now, first of all, when you watch a distance swimmer, a great swimmer, you're gonna notice some kind of a rotation and it's almost like there's a rhythm. It's called a gallop to their stroke. Now, this gallop is not unique to Katie Ledecky and you can actually see this in top swimmers like Michael Phelps and even more recreational swimmers that you see at the pool. What's happening is these swimmers are breathing every two or every four strokes and they're developing this rhythm and it's really used to develop torque and this torque that you notice causes almost an imbalance in the stroke. Now it's really important that you have a balanced stroke between your right and left side. Long axis strokes like freestyle and backstroke require equal symmetry but there's a little bit of a delay and this torque with your hips and kick can create this rotation, additional rotation and it's actually more efficient over time. So if you're thinking about how you incorporate this to your own swimming, really make sure you're finding rhythm and you're getting great rotation, which translates to amazing distance per stroke. You're always trying to reach further and further with every single stroke that you take. Now the next component is the kick. Now if you watch a top distance swimmer, they're not overusing their legs. One of the biggest mistakes that swimmers make is kicking too much. It can actually slow you down pretty significantly. And if you've been a subscriber of the channel, you saw in last week's video that I talk about the different styles of kick and the biggest mistakes that swimmers are making with their kicking technique. So make sure you check that video and subscribe for future videos like that. Now, Katie Ledecky transitions between a two beat kick and a six beat kick, depending on the point in the race. And in training and in competition, you can apply the same principle. So if you're doing longer sets, and I have an example workout that we'll talk about, you'll be doing a two beat kick, which means one kick for every arm stroke. And as you pick up speed in shorter distances or the end of a race or the end of a workout, you'll wanna transition to this six beat beat kick where you have a little bit more momentum and power and speed and tempo, but it uses more energy and is therefore less efficient. So a lot of swimmers are just using their legs too much and that might be why you're burning out and falling apart over the course of a race or a workout. So in summary, stop kicking. Now the next component is the pull and this is arguably one of the most important. You have the pull and you have the kick and really pay attention to three letters. E, V, F. This is short for early vertical form. It's the way that your hand is positioned in the water as you initiate that pull. So when you're swimming freestyle, you stick your fingertips into the water right in front of your shoulder, you extend out in the same line as your shoulder, and then you start to fingertips go down to the bottom of the pool, and you're gonna create almost a right angle right underneath the water, and that's how you're gonna pull, and that's the early vertical form, and that's how you pull the most water because you have the most surface area with the biggest part of not only your fingertips, but your hand, your forearm, and your entire arm, actually. And if you watch top swimmers like Ledecky or Phelps, or even the best swimmers at your recreational pool, and you look at them underwater, you're gonna see this early vertical forearm, and pretty significantly compared to other swimmers who are not moving as fast. Now, the final part of technique that we need to talk about is body position. A lot of beginner swimmers, especially, are swimming with their head just looking up. Now, remember, the wall is not going anywhere. If you're swimming in open water, you have a semi-valid excuse that you need to lift your head up to make sure you know where you're going. But if you're swimming in a pool, look down, there's a black line, and make sure you're looking down because that's gonna increase your hip position, which is where you create a lot of drag. So if you watch the top swimmers in the world, they're swimming with a really high body position. They're creating very little resistance. The legs aren't really doing that much. It's there for stability. And there's a great rotation with that galloping stroke and a lot of torque. Now, because this video is really gonna highlight 
some of the top things that Katie Ledecky is doing specifically because she has dominated the pool from the 200, 400, 800, 1500 distance. If there was an event that assesses how good of a workout swimmer, I'm sure she's the best swimmer in the world when it comes to training. So let's talk about some training history and what led her to be one of the top swimmers. And so it's really important to look historically because sometimes when you see a swimmer who's already really good, it's really important to look at like, how did they get there? What were some of the things that they were doing? So fun fact here, I pulled up some history on Katie Ledecky. When Katie Ledecky was 10 years old, she was swimming five to six times per week, 20 to 25,000 yards in that week. At 11 to 12, she was swimming six to seven times per week, 35 to 40,000 yards per week. Then from age 13 to 14, she ramped up to seven to eight workouts per week over 40,000 yards per week. And then when she was 15 years old, leading into their first Olympics where she won the 800 freestyle back in London, she was swimming nine times per week, 60 to 70,000 yards per week. That's a lot of volume, but it doesn't mean you have to do that kind of volume if you're trying to take your swimming to the next level. And the workout example I have here is 5,500 meters, and we're gonna talk about it, but this same workout can easily be chopped down to two or 3,000 meters, and I'll explain that in just a second. Training is a another important component to how you can swim fast over a long period of time without getting tired. We talked about technique. In training, we have three different phases, endurance, threshold, power and race phase. So even if you're not doing a competition, all three of these are important because these are different effort levels that you migrate from and you spend a different amount of time in each of these different zones and that delivers the best result for you as a swimmer. Now these workouts and examples of sets that I'm gonna go over in each of these different phases are from a presentation that I listened to by Katie Ledecky's coach, Yuri Sugiyama. And he specifically mentioned these different sets in each of these different phases and I want to go over them with you and talk about them from my perspective. So the first one is the endurance phase. This is where we're building capacity. How about this set? 11 400s on the five minute, descend one through 11, dropping five seconds on the interval on each one. So number one is on the five minute, number two on the 455, number three on the 450. That's really hard, that's really fast. But if you think about it from the endurance perspective, that's a 4,400 meter set, and you're trying to just develop that aerobic capacity. So you're swimming at a certain speed, this is threshold endurance, and you're really just putting in the work right there. Second set is a descending ladder. I've done one of these, it's painful. 1,000 freestyle, 900 freestyle, 800 freestyle, 700, 600, 500, 400, 300, 200, 100, and you descend your average pace all the way through. And I've done this long course, it's really painful, but it's a good block of five or 6,000 meters where you're just putting in the work. And then the next one is three times through, one 200, followed by one 400, followed by one 800, and you're gonna descend by round. So if you think about it, if it's written out 200, 400, 800, you're gonna descend each of those rounds trying to hold a faster and faster pace per hundred. The idea here is we're building endurance, which means capacity, and you have to put in some work. You have to put in some volume. As we move into the threshold phase, we're still putting in the work, but now we're starting to incorporate a little bit more speed and agility to that endurance. So here's an example of set six 250s at four minute best average. Best average is where you're trying to go fast and you're just trying to maintain that across all 1500 meters. If you notice, six 250s is basically a broken 1500. So if your goal is to be fast in the 1500 meter swim, you're gonna do sets like that. Another example is doing 100 easy, followed by a 200 fast, followed by two 100s easy, two 200s fast, and then you continue all the way through five. So the next version of that would be three 100s, then three 200s, four 100s, then four 200s, five 100s, and then five 200s fast. Woo, that sounds painful. And then finally, 15 100s at the 130 best average. And this is basically a broken 1500. So if you think about what is your target race, whether it's a 1,000, a 400, a 500, breaking it apart into 100s or even 50s in a shorter distance is a great way to really test yourself and see what you can hold, but also train your body to swim fast. And then the final phase is power and race pace. So this is doing cycles of 125s, holding only 12 strokes per length. Now that's Katie Ledecky. Depending on your speed, strength, length in the water, maybe it's 15 strokes or 16 strokes, but trying to find a pace that you can swim fast 
with a good distance per stroke and applying these elements of technique that we talked about earlier. Another speed and power phase set is doing three rounds through of a 200 drill swim, so we're working on technique now, and then three 100s at race pace. So trying to hold maybe a broken 1500 split, kind of like best average, but starting out with some technique work and distance per stroke before that. We're really trying to layer in the power to an efficient stroke. And then the final one is doing a broken 200 or a broken 400. I mentioned the word broken, but what that means is you're taking your total distance and you're swimming it in pieces with a designated amount of rest between each of them. So in a 200, you might swim it as 450s, or you might go a 50, and then a 100, and then a 50, with either 10 or 20 seconds rest between, where you're trying to hit a target time, and then you subtract the rest out and you see where you're at. You can do a 400 the same way as four 100s, or you can go a 100, and then a 200, and then a 100, or you can break it up by 50s, a lot of different ways that you can do that. Now this is all fine and dandy, but let's talk about a workout that you might be able to do that is actually in the My Swim Pro app, and then I'm gonna talk about some pro tips that we can apply to all of this, so that way you can swim fast over a long period of time without getting tired and not let your technique fall apart. So like I mentioned, this workout is in the My Swim Pro app. It is called Endurance Special, and boy is it special for you. The workout starts with one 500 freestyle easy. Now if you notice while I put this on the screen, it is in the app, but it's color coded and that's by effort level. I talked a lot about different effort levels, whether it's best average, endurance, threshold. Now those are all defined in the app and it's color coded so that way you know exactly how hard to push yourself on each of those different sets. And also any equipment that is referenced will be there available in the app as well. So for example, we're going to go 1050s kick next, and that is going to be with fins. Then we're going to do 5 100s IM just to finish up our warm up. Then we go into the preset. We're going to do 450s drill, and these drill are my favorite bow and arrow drill. So we're going to focus on taking six kicks on our side, arm is extended, elbow is out of the water, and we're holding that for six kicks. Then we take a stroke and rotate. For that, we're going to use all of our equipment, snorkel, fin, and paddle to make it really, really simple and focus on the technique. Then we go into a 300 pull and it's build. Now, if you notice for me, this is on the four minute and 20 second. Like I mentioned, this app is 100% personalized to you, the swimmer. So this app right now, the intervals, the 420 is designed for me. If you're a little bit faster than me, you'll see a faster interval on everything. If you're a little bit slower than me, we will calculate automatically using the app's algorithm what the interval should be for you. So it's amazing technology. You gotta make sure you check it out for iPhone and Android if you haven't downloaded already. Finally, we get to the main set, and this is where the magic happens. We're gonna go a 200 freestyle, that's gonna be build, followed by a 400 freestyle at threshold, so we're not gonna get a lot of rest. Then we're doing four 100s freestyle best average. So we're combining a few different components that we talked about over here with regard to training, endurance, threshold capacity, a little bit of speed with the best average. We're gonna go three rounds through. Ideally, you get faster on each of those different rounds, and like I mentioned, if this volume of 5,500 is too much for you, you can just do one round and that'll chop off 1,000 per round. So if you only do one round, that'll be 3,500 instead of 5,500. Then we finish with 1050s freestyle, and this is the cool down, silent swimming. Really focus on using all your senses to make sure you're not making a lot of splash when your fingertips enter the water. And now let's talk about some pro tips that are mentioned not only by Katie Ledecky's coach, but by myself and countless other coaches that I've seen and talked with over the years. The first pro tip is to train your technique in a workout the way that you want to swim in competition. Now I talked about Kayla Decky a lot in this video and we mentioned that she has a two beat kick at certain points and a six beat kick. She has a gallop in the stroke. She has fantastic early vertical form. So when you're thinking about how you want to train, whether it's training for competition or just for fitness and you're trying to get fast and you want to maintain that speed over time, the stroke technique that you have in training on specific sets needs to be the desired technique you have in the desired outcome. So if it's lifetime fitness, make sure you're swimming with perfect technique and just enjoy life. If you're trying to be fast at a 1500, when you're doing sets like this, you need to think about your stroke technique, whether it's the two beat kick or six beat kick in the same way. So if you transition from two beat kick to six beat kick in one of these sets, like the best average, for example, you've got to do that. Now the second pro tip is if you want to swim fast, you have to train fast. I said it before and I'll say it again, you're not trying hard enough. You need to swim faster in training if you want the results to show up 
in an actual competition or just in general. If you're trying to be a faster swimmer, you gotta elevate the intensity. And if that means swimming with slightly easier intervals so that you get more rest, that's okay too. And you can give feedback in the My Swim Pro app and that feedback will translate two new and improved intervals for your specific workout. And the third pro tip is to finish the workout the way that you wanna start the next workout. Yuri, who is Katie Ledecky's coach, talked about this a lot, that they're always trying to incorporate some technique work, even some tempo work at the end of a workout, so that way you start the next workout at your very best. If you guys enjoyed this video, you're gonna love the origin story of Katie Ledecky. Make sure you check out that video and let me know what questions you have down below in the comments. Wish you the best and happy swimming.